Okay, this time we're going to talk about um, uh, the Bridge of Return, and uh, we're going to, which is a diving bell. And let me just quickly introduce once again what's going on in this chart. Uh, the top level is God mind. That's the only reality, and that's where we are and never left. Then we fell into the dream, uh, and this this mind split into two parts, or it found two thoughts, two thought systems waiting for it. The wrong mind is the ego, it's it, all of us. It's, it's us, uh, but it's the part of us that wants to be separate. And then this right mind, governed by the Holy Spirit, or Jesus, um, or Buddha, whatever you want to call it, any symbol you want to use, um, is where we remember, oh, I'm just dreaming, nothing happened. That says separation happened. This says nothing happened, and I'm just dreaming. So I'm peaceful over here because I know nothing happened. Uh, I have not left God. God has not left me. Nobody's out to punish me. And um, so over here is the place of peace. Over here is the place of great pain. And then um, sin stands for separation is necessary. I can't bear the sin, so I split myself into two parts. Each part thinks that it is the innocent one and the other is the guilty one. Each one has the different version of who's, who's to blame. And we think we're different. And um, uh, so that's, that's enough. This is the world of time and space, which is basically mindless. So everything's really happening up here, to the extent that anything's happening. It's happening here in the mind of the dreamer. But this is, this is what's going on in the mind of this dreamer. Uh, we project it out into the form. We're certain that the form is real. Our bodies tell us that the form is real, um, but it's not. You always have to get back from the body, go back to remembering that you're a dreamer, look at what you've been doing over here, and then shoot, change your mind and choose this instead. But we have to look. Okay, so the bridge of return is one of the uh, metaphors that's, that's used in a couple of places in the course. And uh, we're going to look at it in terms of this map. And I'm going to be helped today by the lovely Carol, who's uh, going to help by reading some things from, from, the, uh, uh, from the bridge of return and diving bells. So why don't you read that first line? Though? Sooner or later must everyone bridge the gap he imagines exists between his selves. Okay, here's the two selves. Or here's the two, you could say, here's the two selves. The, the wrong-minded self and the right-minded self. But it looks like there's two different bodies down here. And we have to bridge the gap. We cannot fix any relationship between any two bodies because we have an investment in them being separated. That investment will always make us choose uh, me first, you know, one or the other, kill or be killed, rather than choosing um, joining. Here, the minds are already joined up here, which is where the peace is, because I know nothing happened. Um, you and I may seem to be different bodies, but we're really the same, we're a mind, and we become companions on the journey home. No matter how much I may have hated you all of my life. I come to recognize you are my forgiveness partner. And uh, we're going home together. So go ahead. And what else can you find there? <laughs> Healing is the effect of minds that join as sickness comes from minds that separate. Okay, so we've got to have sickness over here um, because each one is willing um, to be sick in order to say, see, you did this to me. It's your fault. Um, there's a line in the Course about, um, behold me, brother, it's your hands I die. In other words, if anything happens to me, it's your fault. And that especially starts with mommy and daddy. You know, my diaper's wet, wah, it's your fault. <laughs> behold me, mother and father, you know, I'm suffering because you, you didn't come fast enough or you didn't give me enough love or you favored my sibling over me, all of those kinds of things. And it also says the, the terrible words, in your suffering of any kind is hidden your own concealed desire to kill. 
so uh, we think that we're so innocent. This microbe got me. I, I didn't do it, or you know, my genetic predisposition is not my fault. I didn't do it. You know, I was ab mask. I was abused <laughs> as a child. You know, if I'm an abuser now, it's like Dexter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. The miracle does nothing just because the minds are joined and cannot separate. Yet in the dreaming, has this been reversed and separate minds are seen as bodies which are separated and which cannot join. Right. So bodies cannot join, ever. It is the gap between you where the sickness has been bred. Thus you are joined in sickness to preserve the little gap unhealed, where sickness is kept carefully protected, cherished and upheld by firm belief, lest God should come to the bridge, to bridge, sorry, the little gap that leads to him. Right. So um, we have such an investment in keeping ourselves separate, even while we pretend, oh, honey, I love you so much. I want to be with you all the time, you know, and that will never last. <laughs> so, so, um, We've got to keep our little separate space. I've got to be me. <laughs> you know, when two people come together in the beginning, what they do is they, I, I look out and I say, you know, what does he want? Uh, oh, he, he likes this and this and this. So I'll push away those parts of myself so he won't see those, but I'll just put forward the parts that he's going to want. And this person does the same thing. Uh, but after a while, you think, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep up the pressure of pretending to be something I'm not. I gotta be me. Frank Sinatra said, you know, I'll do it my way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have such an investment and there's a the secret vows section of the text. It talks about how we made a secret vow to the ego um, that we would uh, and to each other, that we would hurt each other and, be, and suffer from each other. We promised, you know, I will hurt you, you will hurt me. For that opportunity of forgiveness, maybe? No, no. we didn't have any, you know, no forgiveness is going on up here. <laughs> I'm thinking of the littlest angel. <laughs> now, you can give it another purpose, which is exactly what happens over here. So we st still seem to be bodies, but all of those situations, all of those hot buttons give a new purpose purposes going back up here and remembering I'm doing this I can change my mind and uh, and we can only go home together and and that means I have to pull my projections off of you and see that we are really the same okay the gap is little, yet it holds the seeds of pestilence and every form of ill because it is a wish to keep apart and not to join. The purpose of the gap is all the cause that sickness has, for it was made to keep you separated in a body which you see as if it were the cause of pain. The cause of pain is separation, not the body, which is only its effect. Yes. Okay, so I often say bodies do not feel, and of course says, bodies do not feel anything. Pain in the body, seemingly in the body, is a thought up here of this pain, and I'm going to project it onto the body and punish the body. So I think that sins are in bodies now, and they're, they're not in my mind. I, the ego never wants to go, me, me to go back to the mind, because then I'll never have a choice. Um, so the bridge of return demands, you know, that's what the miracle does, brings us up here where I can look and see, oh, I've been believing something totally false and totally hurtful to me and to others, and I can, the miracle will carry me across here. Um, there's one place in there where I think it says, um, the vision of Christ is what makes the bridge, and another place it says, I think the Holy Spirit is what makes the bridge, the forgiveness makes the bridge. Uh, but that's how we get back over here to this perspective. Um, we're, we're much saner and more peaceful. We, we won't stay here all the time because our conditioning is so great uh, after a lifetime of seeing ourselves 
separate and having this this constant voice in here saying, Look out, don't go back there. God will annihilate you. <laughs> you don't want to go back and be part of this this stupid peace and, and unity. You want to have stories. You want to have adventures. You want to be special. So We're constantly choosing which mind to choose. Right. Yeah. Yet separation is but an empty space enclosing nothing, doing nothing. The gap between you and your brother is not one of space between two separate bodies. And this but seems to be dividing off your separate minds. It is the symbol of a promise made to meet when you prefer and um, separate until you and he elect to meet again. Right, like so, so that's a secret vow. Mm -hmm. No. We will, we will seem to be in bodies and then we can go apart. Each, each body seems to have the will to go where it wants to do, love who it wants to love. And when your bodies seem to get in touch and thereby signify, thereby signify a meeting place to join, but always it is possible for you and him to go your separate ways. Conditional upon the right to separate, will you and he agree to meet? From time to time and keep apart in intervals of separation which do protect you from the sacrifice of love the sacrifice of love that's what that's what the ego says that love is is a sacrifice if I have to give up my special separate self in order to, to, to truly love I don't want to do that the body saves you for it gets away from total sacrifice and gives you the time in which to build again your separate self, which you truly believe, diminishes as you and your brother meet. Your mind and his are joined in brotherhood. That's up here. Our, our minds are joined. They come from the same piece. Um, and yet between your minds there is no gap. The Holy Spirit is in both your minds and he is one because there is no gap that separates his oneness from itself. The gap between your bodies matters not, for what is joined in him is always one. Right, right, so, so the oneness is here, um, and what we learn is, is it's a relief to come over here. So I don't have to be constantly judging, constantly defending myself, constantly finding fault, constantly feeling attacked by someone else or judged by someone else. I come over here and I remember, it doesn't matter what your body's doing, our minds are doing. And that's the truth. And, and it's a process of gradually spending more time over here and less time over there. And learning to trust that there's this presence of peace and love here um, that can deal with anything in form that comes up on the screen of our lives. So that is the crossing the bridge. And I think that the bridge of return, really, that's going to be a process, too. It's not like I'm just going to leap from here over to here. Um, like I say, we're, we're going to be going back and forth before we finally go over here and say, I don't want to go back there anymore at all. Then we'll go poof. But until then, it's usually a two-way trip across the bridge. <laughs> and does it seem like we go poof at that time, or is it more like we are seeing the world differently. We're, yeah, we're, we're still seeing, in the dream, but we're seeing the world. We're, we're seeing it differently, differently, but ultimately, you know, you know, what am I doing this stupid dream for? I want to wake up. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> or remember that I am awake, you know? It's, right now we say, there's, no, say, there's that not actually anybody here to wake up, so yeah. the dreamer is itself a dream. <laughs> yeah, dreams within dreams. <laughs> <clears throat> you see the world you value. On this side of the bridge, you see the world of separate bodies seeking to join yeah. each other in separate unions and to become one by losing. In other words, become one by losing means I'm going to have to give something up of my, my preferences in order to accommodate your preferences. I don't like doing that, but... Sacrifice. See, sacrifice, right. <laughs> <laughs> Across the bridge, it is so different. For a time, the body is still seen, but not exclusively as it is seen here. 
the little spark that holds the great rays within it is also visible and this spark cannot be limited long to littleness. Once you have crossed the bridge, the value of the body is so diminished in your sight that you will see no need at all to magnify it, for you will realize that the only value the body has to enable you to bring your brother sorry the only value the body has is to enable you to bring your brothers to the bridge with you and to be released together there mm -hmm. the bridge itself is nothing more than a transition in the perspective of reality on this side everything you see is grossly distorted and completely out of perspective I liked too in this class, the bridge between that world and this is so little and so easy to cross that you could not believe it is the meeting place of worlds so different. Yet this little bridge is the strongest thing that touches on this world at all. This little step, so small, it has escaped your notice as a stride through time to into eternity, beyond all ugliness into beauty that will enchant you and will never cease to cause you wonderment at its perfection. Oh, there's more. Um, Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds. Mm -hmm. Peace is the bridge that everyone will cross to leave this world behind. Great. And there is also a song called, Will You Cross This Bridge? Um, which I don't, I've probably had a link to it. Uh, I'll put a link to it anyway. It's, it's, in, it's in Vespers. Oh, okay. Yeah, Will You Cross This Bridge, which has some of these course quotes that goes with it and interspersed with the lyrics. <laughs> so. Will you cross this bridge to me? Come home to me, my child, be you free. Will you cross this bridge to me? I'm calling to your soul, be you free. Mm. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat>